I would like to welcome you all to the Mumbai edition of Kharagpur Ecosystem Meetup 2024. We are excited to host everyone today and appreciate to take the time here and coming. Uh, we were established in 2006 with the support of the Science and Technology Entrepreneurs Park. ESA has always worked to promote the startup culture and inculcate entrepreneurial knowledge and enthusiasm. KEM Kharagpur Eco Startup Meetup is the annual alumni meet of IIT Kharagpur alumni, including on entrepreneurs, investors, and other professionals who are contributing to the nature of entrepreneurship. Speaking about today, we will have a panel discussion on career odyssey, corporate or entrepreneurial growth, and a, and a networking session after that. Now, I would like to welcome Mr. Satya Gautam Vadlamudi, who holds a PhD and a BTEC in AI Computer Science and Mathematics from IIT Kharagpur. He is the co-founder and CEO of Elistan Investment Management. Next, I would like to introduce Mr. Kamal Kishore Das from the batch of 1998 from the Department of Ocean Engineering and Naval Architecture. He is the founder of OpenFin Technologies. I would like to welcome Mr. Anurag Shivasta from the batch of 1990 from the Department of Physics. He has also completed his MBA into XLRI. Currently, he is a CEO of HRNX. Also my <laughs> Next, I would like to uh, introduce Mr. Peshu Acharya from the batch of 1989 from the Department of Chemical Engineering. He is the founder of Think as a Consumer. <laughs> now he is also the CM of Rocket Number. He launched all the toy stores in India. A lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> there is a person who actually has that spirit within the corporate structure, it's, it's in, in launching new brand, new product, bringing Hemlich to India. What has it done? Not, not <laughs> <laughs> now I would like to hand over to our panelists and they'll carry forward. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Tanya. Really appreciate. And I, I would like to thank all of you who have come on a Sunday. Okay, I know in Bombay, Sunday is actually a difficult time. You know, people want to spend time with their family or otherwise friends. So thanks everyone coming in. And uh, for me, of course, I do this quite often. Yesterday I was in the entrepreneurship meet for a college for Jai Hind. Uh, so, and I think NMIMS has something two days hence. So I usually do so when they told me, I said I will come for sure. Okay. So once again, thanks the panelists for coming in. Yeah. Uh, so in terms of time, I think I'll try to have this panel discussion. Uh, for around 45 minutes. Yeah. So it's quarter to six. Yeah. So uh, 45 minutes, not more than that. Huh? Uh, and after that, we will have questions. Uh, my my recommendation is that, guys, whatever questions you think is appropriate, please to ask. Because I think between them, they would have around, I don't know, around like 50 to 100 years of experience in some matter, post graduation, after graduation. I have around 30 odd years of experience working and I'm still working. It's not that I have uh, retired. Uh, and uh, so take whatever we can, not necessarily whatever panelists say are what is called gospel truth, but it is their experience that they will share. Okay, so that's the way. So with this, I kind of have questions. I don't have a list I've created. And you also can put in your questions or whatever you think is appropriate. I think the first question which a lot of the young are primarily now first addressing to Anurag and then you guys can also answer. He said, today a high a flying, you know, a graduate from an IIT current group, let's say a four year or five year graduate, okay, he or she has opportunities of multiple things, okay, and they have defined two things. One is called the corporate way of doing, one is called the entrepreneurial way of doing, which is you do set up your own thing. There might be a third which is you are continuing further education. Huh? So these are the three options. Is there some direction guidance you can give? See, so I my first I, question I, is I, I don't answer. see this as a very linear kind of a situation that it's an either or kind of a Now, to be a successful entrepreneur, I've seen a lot of them 
we come to that at the age of 30, 35, maybe even 40. And one of the things is that, you know, if you want to learn something, learn at some somebody else's expense. So that's that's number one. Okay. Number two, what you need is is a network of friends because you know, you know, a lot of times I started uh, and uh, it's a very lonely journey if you're alone and scaling up becomes difficult. So you need to have some like-minded uh, friends to work with. And you know, his main question is whether one should take a corporate journey after a Kharagpur or this thing. If you have got a brilliant idea, you've got something going, then even at 18, 19, you can do it. But that's pretty rare. I mean, you've got to really beta test that idea and see how it works. Typically, for an average person, what I would suggest is join the best company you can possibly do in that sense, two, three years, four years. Uh, maybe get into some DIY or MBA school. Uh, and then suddenly it's been an after that. So you have a very decent uh, ground level experience after college, uh, MBA, very very network. You also have your IIT friends who are there. And you know, after that you do suddenly because then you can learn about organization, how birds are you, and advise the CEOs and everybody else also. Pichasa Maybe you can learn something about supply chain management, FMCG, uh, marketing, or strategy, or whatever. And once you have that knowledge, you would find it easier to raise funding as well as generate new ideas, get people to join you, you have some credibility coming in. So I would suggest have a mix of uh, all of that coming into your portfolio. But then let that not stop you from becoming an entrepreneur if you have a supervisor, like somebody like Rahul Yadav or something, maybe it's a little bit more still. Uh, or, but that's a rare thing, I don't know what way you are, uh, if you have a no, on Rahul Yadav, he is personally worked with me, so I need some inputs. But that is separate. But the main question, and I hand over this to two of you, the uh -huh. main question is that one of the possible dilemmas among the young minds is that I'm passing from IIT KGP, I'm getting a job with whatever, I don't know what are the top companies today, Goldman Sachs or uh, Hindu Sun Lever or Texas Instruments or Barclays. So I'm getting a job at 15 lakhs CTC plus housing plus whatever car and I see this table for next five years huh, versus if I start a startup I don't have anything except myself what should I do not do when should I do some thoughts come to work yeah so maybe I will please go ahead Keshwa thanks for the question yeah so uh, I just want to get a sense of the like people in the audiences how many of you are like maybe Prashant please just introduce but how many of you are like uh, Say last five years in like, like 2018 and later. Yes. <laughs> and uh, how uh, and how many of you want to become an entrepreneur? Yeah, so roughly half uh, is the estimate. Okay, fine. So just to temper the question, because otherwise one doesn't know what to talk, right? So see, I would suggest that uh, you know purely from a discussion perspective, there's no advice, right? have to apply your own mind just like uh, I've been in financial services long enough to give disclosures or disclaimers. So, so you have to apply your mind but what I would suggest is that the question that uh, you know Tanya said that is the topic and what Risha is also asking. See corporate as well right uh, if you have to make a successful career whether in a small company or a large company uh, you got to you know become you know you have to scale you have to network and there is a ladder Right, which one climbs quarterly, annually, whatever it is. It is not an easy job if you really want to climb. If you don't want to climb, things look easy, but really if you want to be in the race, right? And, and we need to be in the race because otherwise your talent that you want to deliver at the best does not come about. Right? You cannot just work in the machine. You know, deliver in a team environment, group environment, department for the company sometimes. So there is real effort needed in that. I have just a word about myself that 10 years roughly I have spent in corporates, 10 12 years, and now 10 years I have been started. Right? So, uh, what, what I would suggest is that's one tra trajectory, and, and there is seriousness needed. See, we have, I will give an example of a person like Bhargav Dasgupta, right? He, is, he used to be ICSA Lombard CEO, and I was VP at that time. And Bhargav is like ICSA Bank, I am Bankroll, and so on. Me and Keshu, incidentally, we are also IMC, right? So, obviously, senior to me. But, but the point I'm trying to make is the, uh, the, the trajectory that he took in building a fantastic career, okay? Because he came from our kind of background. That's why I'm saying, middle class people went to KGP, 
you know, and then or some Jadavpur University when did management and so on and so forth. The seriousness with which he took the job every year in terms of delivery, there was no sense of entitlement. That is, he fought every year, right? And because he fought, we fought, right? And we got a role, right? So there was a leader. I, I mean, and then we have, and obviously the leader is the MD of the organization. I don't think anybody else is the leader in our organization, right? A large organization. Because we then follow, I mean, if you align, you want to grow, then you for work with them. Okay, so one is to understand that whether you fit in in that, how do you fit in? Do you like the Mondays? Are you excited to, you know, think on Sundays that what will I do the rest of the week? That's one thing that to think about on corporate. And, and you need to be thinking about it. If you're needing to push yourself, then something is wrong. Right? That's one very simple check, I would say, that you should do. And then an core underlying this attitude and that is good, but my simple learning is that, you know, soft skills, hard skills, but I would always value hard skills because you need to do a job, right? Uh, and then corporate also need to do a job, right? Somewhere in India, because there are too many people in organizations, we tend to delegate. Delegation is good, there's roles and all of that, but each role also has a delegable, right? So even if you delegate everything to the team, you still need to do something on your own. Then only you will to grow and make a mark, particularly as an engineer. That's one point. The second thing on the entrepreneurship. See, entrepreneurship more than anything is a way of life. Because you know, things change. Uh, things still change dramatically. Right? And you know what is left as an entrepreneur is that your idea. Right? So uh, I when I started my entrepreneur journey, you know, I worked in a startup. I partnered with one of the leading broking houses. Right, set up a venture, India, here, like uh, US, Dubai, so on and so forth, working for US customs. Here also large, big names, startups, Bajaj, and everything. But the learning is that when you go back home, it's yourself and what you're doing on that idea at this point of time. And, and you have finite time and finite resources, which in a corporate set of settings, <coughs> it, you know, you, you have a sense that, okay, there's a budget and the budget will also come next year. That doesn't happen in entrepreneurship. Where most of us have been challenged, I wouldn't use the word faith, but get challenged, is that we think that we have long time. We don't have long time, right? So if I have an idea, suppose, you know, I have an idea to start a coaching class. I need to be then after that, you know, need to be doing that coaching class within a short span of time, which is dictated by the validity of the idea amount of money that I have, the resources, what exactly what I want to do, and hit the ground, right? And then have a real PNL, right? Not a PNL on Excel. And who determines the PNL? The last guy in the chain. You know, provided you have one guy, right? Otherwise, you are the you know, guy against the PNL. So you have to see that you know you have very limited scope initially for most of us, I would say, unless you know, come from a super rich family or a community that really supports you out. But if one way to take for the regular template, you have little time, right? And if you have that attitude that you have to win every season, right, or every, you know, now we'll actually come to that in further questions. Yes. Then you can uh, see a lot. Uh, uh, sorry. Yeah. But so I want to give uh, to yeah. Gautam. He has a PhD. We don't have. <laughs> <laughs> so please. No, I don't mind, Kamal. I'm just no, trying no, to. No, I just think like uh, you know, it depends on your background as well, right? so the context of it. You know, are you coming from a family where the general discussions are around starting a business or family business? Then you actually have a lot of way ahead on these things because you know actually what all happens when trying to set up a business or family business. Or a set of friends, if not family, you know, continuously, you know, from age 13 or 15 or during the PhD days, you have been discussing all four years. Oh, this is what happens, this is what happens, these are the things which are important. So if you don't have that, then suddenly you know you graduated with a you know, engineering degree. I don't know. The only thing is like KHP now has an entrepreneurship school. I don't know, you know, which department you are from. But uh, otherwise it's a little different. Like you are just, you know, I don't know whether it's naive or lack of some skills or something like that. You may be missing out on you know some angles when you are you know jumping into it. So that will make the journey painful. It's just, you know, you anyway have to have a lot of grit and tenacity and all that. Uh, it will just make the journey a bit painful if you are just jumping. That's one thing. And the other is, 
uh, you know, are you like an entrepreneur who wants to make it like a big businessman? It doesn't matter which business it is, I just want to build a big business. Or do you have some sort of passion based? Then that's a, you know, both have pros and cons and stuff like that. Uh, but then that could be a good end. Like you are somebody who has like a page rank approach. Then it's like, okay, you know, it's super good. I know, I'll figure out later other things, but people will love it. Therefore, I'm doing it. So that's a little passion based thing, engineering based thing, your actual skill is coming into it. So that has some sort of an angle. But in both cases, you need investors and team and all that. So then you can brainstorm and see if you know that's going to fly or not. Otherwise, what Sir mentioned about you know doing a job somewhere and try to make it to top tier MBA and then see, you know, depending on you know how far along you are. I think that's a little bit to that. Uh, I, I go back a little bit in time, you know, into the 90s, and that was the time when the tech industry was coming up, and I was fortunate enough. My career started with uh, Mr. Malia's company, Lubito, and then somebody. Lika, Lika, yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, So I was in a few factories. Uh, <laughs> Moment you say Tarun C. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> it was not just Daru, other things. Uh, <laughs> and in the 90s, I. Uh, you know, uh, so I, I was lucky enough to join a company called Digital Equipment Corporation, which was the number two tech company that time. It got absorbed by Compact uh, And the reason I joined the place, my, you know, the guy was handing me, he showed me, you know, what this big uh, screen over there, color screen. I said, I looked at it, and there was no internet in 95, 96. But that place had a high speed connection to the US. And he said, we have something called the internet also. So I checked that out. And then I reached uh, and joined them. Two to three years I worked there, it was good fun. Then uh, there's a guy called Pradeep Singh. He was uh, IIT Delhi 1978 batch. And uh, then he joined Harvard Business School. Uh, joined, uh, you know, I think he was consultant or something. And then he got joined, uh, joined Microsoft with Bill Gates and all those kind of guys. In 93, uh, 94, he decided that he had had enough even in Microsoft. So he made a lot of money even then. Microsoft wasn't some chocolate motor company at the time. He made millions. Mm -hmm. And he started, uh, uh, and he had a vision that he can start a tech support or technology support kind of an organization out of India. That was the first tech support company in India. Okay, so he said Adip, Pradeep Singh. Adip the technology. Yeah, yeah. So he started that. So, and it was in 95 or 96. And he put up another, like, like digital, he also put up, that office was close to mine. So I, I used to pass that and go to my house in the airport or whatever you had in Bangalore. Neha Sadashi Nagar, no? Their office is. Ah, Sadashi Nagar. I'll tell you one more story. That's for this time. So one day I get a call and say, look, I am, you know, digital equipment. I was a very proud guy, you know, big company, all sorts of pattern, you know, huge office, global presence, I would travel to Singapore, etc. Which was in the 90s was like rare. So they said, you know, we are going to have this, you know, you stop options. I never made money out of it. Uh, except for, a, you know, when it was sold in 2015 or something. Uh, but I had left in 2000 uh, and joined a sister company of theirs called Talisma Corporation, which was a product company, the first product company again. Uh, so what excited me was joining all the people. And one thing I noticed in that company, almost everyone was driven by Pradeep Singh Dwayne. He had that entrepreneurial spirit, he had the fire, and he had the vision to say he will change the world. In that sense, obviously it's So you are now it. saying it's better to be an entrepreneur? I'm not saying First time you said that, you know, that we were team. Hey, Baba, he went to US, he joined Harvard Business School, he joined Microsoft, he got all the experience from the in practice. Now, what Pradeep Singh got from Microsoft was not just the money, I mean, he made millions. So when we started a product company, and I was the head of the HR director, so I was going to be having, you know, going to IIT, and it used to be the highest paying company in the IIT at that time. Uh, in 2002, we were paying five and a half lakhs. And only day zero, we'll have a test of product order, then take a percentage of the first Now, uh, the people who were doing the product management for the company, see, and we wanted to make the first in, made in India product and all that kind of thing. It was a CRM kind of a product. And that time I think there was only Salesforce. 
and uh, one or two other companies. In fact, we started a company and then we made this uh, company, which still a lot of, uh, at least my, all marketing people know. Uh, they all, yeah, everybody so in Bombay uses it. I mean, HDFC, uh, HDFC, uh, HDFC, uh, ICSA, ICSA also, uh, ICSA Prudential, and our vision was very clear that, you know, we make a product which is the first in India, it needs to have an interface which looks international, it has, which has international look and feel. It should look like, you know, freedom.com kind of uh, interface or, or something of that sort. So that has to be very, very polished. So product management was given a very, very big focus. Now, both people in India didn't even know what product management is about. Product management, yeah, well, they were uh, what I learned was if somebody handling the Royal Stad brand or Blender's Pride or whatever, you have to product manager of that. This is a very different task. See, you have to tell them in a very precise manner what are the attributes which you think make a successful corporate manager <coughs> stroke corporate tech manager because many of them are tech versus what are the attributes which make a successful entrepreneur are there some commonalities or can you give them so basically we are trying to give them some key success factors you know in an easy manner giving them the amrit in amrit kal as they call it <laughs> okay so I'm now talking that language. Huh? Yeah, let me try uh, right. that, that, Each of you have to give yeah. the Amrit in pointer form. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. so, 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 see the, uh, so what has happened over maybe again a 25 year perspective, right? Even before I started working. So is that India's corporates have become a lot more mature. Like see what happened in maybe US in 100 years has happened in India in 25 years within corporates. But this I can talk about Mumbai. Right, if not any other city. Okay, because now you know what is happening in corporates, and this is where maybe KGB folks there is a learning. I mean, applies to myself as well. Is that in corporate you need to think with your mind, not with your heart. If you were to make a simple distinction. Right? Because most of us think, you know, that this is how I'm going to solve this, right? And what happens is that we maybe at some point, particularly technical, and I'm talking to people less than five years experience is that we don't really go and ask people that what is your view, right? Because we have an ingrained, see, I mean, if you allow me a diversion, I will give one minute no. I will at least one minute. One minute, <laughs> one minute diversion. See, a very quick dope is most KGPs, the DNA that we have is we dig a well, or we dig well, right? That is our, if you have IIT Bombay, you will do the work of your own work, and IIT Delhi will not do work, but it will be very good. Or IIT Madras guy will think silly than and really do it wherever that guy is. So there is some DNA that we have. We tend to be very introverts at our workplace. Right? We may be great in parties. As an individual, I am not talking about professional behavior is templated and people who work, they will validate this. And I am talking about an observation that I had from KGP guys working in workplace. So you are mindful of this. That if the organization sets a target, right? You got to get that target with your colleagues, not alone, right? Here, I think that most KGP guys, you know, take the load of delivering a number or a target or a program, but not really networking very effectively within that small team. That's my simple one point take away on this thing. And on the entrepreneur side, you know, like when you try to build, build in the market, don't try to build in the office, right? Mm -hmm. Because abhi kya hai, the stacks have crashed. Geo Financial is building apps in six weeks. Right? We are talking startups here. Right? So you got to be thinking that two weeks me kya ban sakta, wo market mein ban sakta hai. Aap coding ka, but as a startup I'm talking, and first three years of a startup. I have now run five startups. I'm talking from experience. I spent in my set, one startup, I spent 20 crore billion of my hard money. Right? 20 crore rupee I'm loaned a Lekin wo, it's not worth it. Right now you got to brief, you have to build, you have to build in the market. Right? And you got to figure out what you have to use, low code use, karo, no code use, karo. nothing to do. I mean, you have to figure out how to build a tool at the minimum cost. Product development is not worth it, expense. Product is worth it. Development cost is no more worth it. It will not give you ROI. So, this change and this challenge. Now, Silicon Valley is a very important point. Silicon Valley companies, agar Idea clear hota hai, to ek ek mahine mein pro product chan kar hai, aur do mahine mein investor aata hai, right? But otherwise, wo idea ban rahe hota hai. So fail fast is the mantra, right? That's it. Yeah, welcome. Yours. Just if you can give them some characteristics which make, like he said, success 
KSF for successful corporate life, KSF for successful entrepreneurial life. I feel uh, you know, coming right of the college, we have strong technical skill set, right? But we may not know what makes business a business. So understanding a little bit about you know the business more, that will help establish some context. And developing emotional intelligence. These two things, I mean how to deal with people, usually engineers are very bad, and how to think about business, engineers are again very bad. Because we don't have any training. We are trained in whatever the technical discipline that we come from. So those two things will help you know navigate the corporate life well. Actually, do very well if they do because we already come from a strong you know, technical strength. Uh, and on the entrepreneurial side, it's uh, yeah, again, I mean, what I can think of right now is you need to have much more uh, deeper understanding of the problem you're solving, who you're solving it for, why they need it, whether they're willing to pay for it. Marketing over tech. So, <laughs> I'm really happy. But my next question to three of you would be. Um, I would want you to take them through your a little bit of professional life and see where uh, something you have learned or you have done differently so that personal anecdotes become examples for them. Whatever you want to share, share. Whatever it is too personal, don't share. It's up to you. So that's the next question. But before that, this is my number. Okay. Is this process going okay? Are you getting some value or not? Yes, yes. yes no. Okay. So I want you to ask questions to me for them, you know, so that if there is any specific questions, if I think that is important, you can I can ask them in this next half an hour. You understand? This is my WhatsApp number, nine eight six seven six four one zero three eight. We would have used technology. There is an app which is there by which you can do all this, yeah. but this is easier. Huh? Okay. So if there is any specific which is relevant for you, ask that question, so I can ask the panel. Yeah. So. No, I would want you to send it to me. Okay. What's happened yeah, 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 to me? I will review it and then I laugh. Okay. <coughs> so now I'm telling you what I'm wanting to do here. I'm wanting them to share a little bit of their professional life. If you ask both these two gentlemen has been a little bit of tech person. He's been tech and management. He's largely tech. He's again been tech and management. I have been only management. Because unfortunately, I haven't done too much of post-engineering tech. You understand? I directly went into MBA school. Yeah, but you will hear the perspective. I'll also share my perspective. No problem if that is okay. Though I'm not part of the panel, I'll share. Huh? So that's one. This is the next question, and you can do it freely. In the meantime, you guys ask questions. Use this opportunity well, because my each day consultancy fees is one lakh. Got it? Each of them will be one lakh or more. So there is a three, four lakh which we are putting on the table for you guys. Yeah. Huh, but you have to extract. So ask me, ask me questions. I can ask them. And then of course after we finish, there will be a normal question answer session also. So with this I start. Any of you can start. Huh? But make it your life journey where they learn something. This is wrong, right? And I'll also do mine. We'll start from KMT. Uh, I did my BTEC in 2008, and CS, you know, as you know, we are flooded with assignments and definitely no time for you know learning about business. Also, no awareness that you know I should learn more about these things. Uh, yeah, so that's where we are. And uh, yeah, the, my project was in AI at that time, which was. Uh, just seemed very interesting after I it, not many people after I got it. So I was very happy with PPC, sir, if you know, you know him. So, uh, so that's the background. We come back to this point. So uh, campus placement was Google, so went to Google, uh, worked on Arkut, um, well, I don't know whether yeah, you remember Arkut. 2000. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was Facebook before Facebook. So we was working on basically mobile applications, uh, native apps. Uh, those days, Android was not there. And so we had to build like Java apps to install in phones. First iPhone web, web you know, uh, web app, iPhone web app. Basically, you know, how do you use touch elements and give it a beautiful experience. So it was sort of first uh, touch project from Google also uh, at the point in time. So iPhone was a new moment also. So it was good. A uh, lot of satisfaction because whatever you do, you know, it's in news. You know, everybody covers it. Millions of downloads on the first day of release. 
So it's like, you know, uh, you think this is the world, and you know, that sets all wrong expectations. And people who are more experienced who just join Google would say, you know, so this is your first job, what will you do next? So that's sort of the setting. Uh, but after a while, basically, uh, at least personally for me, it was like, okay, a lot of software engineering, and you know, it seems like, yeah, I can do it, I'm not feeling challenged, that sort of a thing came up. And I remembered that, you know, my BTEC project was much more challenging. So at this stage, I should do something very challenging. So that's how I went back to KGP. Uh, started working on those AI projects again, uh, collaborating with uh, General Motors and Xerox. So it's like, you know, a uh, little bit of theory and also application to some, you know, diverse industries, one in automotive, one in data mining. So that sort of continued and, uh, yeah. After PhD, basically, one of the projects, uh, you know, people there went to Intel Labs to start an AI, you know, plus parallel computing computing sort of division and try to see where we stack against NVIDIA. So, uh, and that sounded interesting and went there as a research scientist and again it was more like uh, basically optimizing AI algorithms, existing algorithms onto compiler level, hardware level coding and making architectural changes to design computers, newer types of computers, those things. So, that was all good but, you know, as you could have probably put together by now already, I do anything for my passion sort of thing. So I was like, okay, I'm not innovating new AI algorithms. Okay, I'm not getting you know, the satisfaction sort of thing. So uh, I went to do a postdoc uh, in AI uh, from Intel in US. And again, uh, on an adjacent field, uh, basically I was into various research, then I went to automated planning, basically. These are fields which use machine learning outputs to optimize and achieving goals, things like that. So, uh, so that sort of the journey came back to India, uh, joined Capillary. From there onwards, actually, the real industry experience sort of started. It was a little bit like startup, mature startup. By then, I think Series C or D was, you know, they were raising. And they were starting data science division. They were sitting on lots of data. So how to, you know, which leverage it? This was 2016. Oh. By that time, they are mature stuff. Very mature. Yeah. Yeah. But they didn't have the data science division. Huh. So, so I think you are open once. Yeah. So their uh, co-founder, I think it came in 2008. So I know them from that time. So got a little bit glimpse of, you know, how startups work. Then I thought, okay, this is hard and stuff like that. And if that was hard, and then I went to an even smaller startup. Next, uh, set of data science at Credit Vizia. Yeah. We were building uh, this course for people who don't have uh, civil scores and all, who don't have credit history. And that was like, you know, very, very startup y sort of experience, very really small office. Uh, first time actually I entered this space of not really working with IITMs, not really working with, you know, because Capillary was anyway full of KGB people. So, you have good people. So, know. Capillary is that people like us, PLUs. So I was, I was a board of one of the companies called housing.com. Mm -hmm. That was also like us, all IIT Bombay. Okay, uh, office here only for buy. Yeah. Huh? So those are some of those large startups. All startups are not that. That's what he's trying to say. So there you get to learn a lot about, you know, how do you get work done? And you know, still have to get a lot of things done. How do you motivate them, teach them? A lot of teaching comes into play. You just cannot expect that you will do a task and they'll do it. You also have to little bit teach them this is how you focus and you know you have to cut it and all types of project management comes in. So uh, all that happened and then during the time basically you know I uh, was just exploring beyond AI and you know seeing uh, what else to learn, trying to learn more about business, this, that and uh, uh, believe it or not it's like Google ad came saying our business school executive education actually I think when you do a lot of MBA kind of searches, they show up, <laughs> and I was like, okay, <laughs> let me see this, you know, and so on, and uh, by the time I clicked on it, naturally they took all my data, and they were following up with me, so do you want to pursue this program, that program, and it was like, okay, by the time you reach, you know, sort of, VP level, even though in a small company, you feel like, you know, sort of, many things, and, you know, you know my background, like, did PhD post up, how much can I do? kind of know what else to do sort of thing. But then I was like, okay, let me just put in the application and then we'll see. And then I put in the application and I got accepted next day. And I was like, okay, <laughs> now it's very quickly.
So this is where Harvard Business School is. Executive education. Executive. They have these one year programs which basically which year was cover this? about 20, 20 to 21. We got affected by COVID so it's time. This is not an AMP. This is not an AMP. AMP kind of same. Seven week stuff. There are many variants. AMP, AMP. This is like This is 40 lakhs. 40 lakhs. Open PMX or Dalpe so one point six. Small cash for Dalpe. That's right. This is a money. We are just sitting here and just pulling your hair. Nothing compared to MBA method. Yeah. 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 Startup wouldn't have taken off. Uh, it kind of many of them, you know, invested. Uh, there's a lot of support from HBS community as well. Uh, so, yeah, this has been the journey so far. Uh, no, my question would be, your journey. Would you have done anything differently now that you have a kind of, you know, the rear view mirror? Anything different you would have done? Yeah, I mean. I would have liked more awareness, like when I was leaving Google uh, and going back to PhD, I mean, uh, if I kind of had some more business sense on where Google would go and things like that, probably that would change my decision, but I'm not really sure whether my passion would have you know, won or whether the mind would have won, what sort of thing. But at any point in time, I would have liked more awareness. Even before starting the startup, you know, what are all the things? Uh, that I lack or that I should be ready with before starting. If only I had the awareness, that would have helped. At every point, just having more knowledge would have helped. But uh, what would I have done differently? Uh, but any of the decisions you would have taken differently? That's a lot of minor decisions while running the startup and all. No, no. But I'm talking major. Which major is these moves? Yeah. Uh, not really sure. I'm also constrained by my. Family setting, like my family required me to stay back in India, so I couldn't really go abroad and do PhD and things like that, which otherwise, you know, would be a preferred thing. Go to really as top as you can and do it like the long time. Uh, yeah, so yeah, if I think of it, I'll come back. Yeah, sure. Come on. Yeah, so maybe uh, you summarize 25 years very quickly and productively, but, <laughs> but uh, what? So uh, I went to IAM like just after one year. Of KDP, right? Uh, I mean, what uh, my learning is that you know we discard our core very, I mean, the core department very easily, and that's I would say just it's a mistake in my personal view. If I, I mean, if I done went to I am first and I did later and did a naval architect, maybe I would have been building the best yachts in the world, right? Because we let go of our talent, right? Not only really me, I mean, the entire department, none of maybe one guy has pursued naval. And that's a loss to the country and loss, and it's a real loss to the country and it really pains me now that we are in India and the way India is growing. Our best talent is not sticking to port. My next startup idea is this. Yeah. I'll run a startup just for people to stay on the port. Because tier 4 graduate students, engineering college students are in the port, earning 50,000 rupees in civil engineering. Right? And we let go of jobs because you know, the package doesn't look good or inspiration is not there at the right time. In my view, I would say that we need to be inspiring. As individuals, we need to inspire a lot. Right? You have as much a fiduciary responsibility to guys who are graduating in your department, right? To tell them that you know department is working. Right? So I would say this is one big it's it's not a one, one can say it's a regret or whatever, but I would say this is the opportunity that we let go. Had I been in the US, you know, nobody would have pulled me to somewhere else. Right? Because the environment also shapes you when you're young. So, we have time in India where India has become big and the core has got real meat, right? And terrible. That is why the whole India stock is you know, going up. You know, because the thing, things are changing. <coughs> All the railway stocks are going, going up. up. Absolutely. IRFC, RBNL. Yeah, it's absolutely. like this rail is flying. Yeah. See, when, when, when I started like building my business in the US, I realized that Google Maps is not enough. If I was in the US, I would have come to the US. The 
रीजन इसको वो रोड पे तो दिखता है वो मैप जस्ट डिजिटाइजेशन देर इज नो जेन्यूननेस अबाउट इट देर इज नो इनोवेशन यू एन आई आर डूइंग फार मोर इनोवेशन हम सोचते हैं और फिर एक वेंचर को लैंड करते हैं वहाँ तो पहले लैंड किया हुआ तीन सौ साल की कैपिटलिज्म है आई एम स्पीकिंग इन हिंदी टू बी फास्टर अदरवाइज इट टेक लॉट मोर टाइम सो वहाँ पे क्या है कि आपकी रियल जो वर्ल्ड है सिस्टम्स है तीन सौ साल वहाँ पे है तो आप डिजिटाइजेशन इजी है राइट आप ऊपर जाते हो वो स्टोरी आपने सुना होगा वीक उन्होंने ऊपर जाते हो सोचता है गूगल मैप्स बनाए बिकॉज रोड दिखता है और मार्किंग दिखता है मेरे को भी दिखेगा आपको भी दिखेगा थिंग इज दैट दैट सिस्टम गिव्स यू लॉट मोर इन साइड प्रोडक्टिविटी पावर we need to build systems in this country now which gives us power and i'm not talking about any politics here it's about the time has come and there is huge opportunity in this country at this point of time right so i one of the things that i find is that you know maybe i should have better on it much earlier okay that's one thing the second thing i would say is that inspiration leaders so i had the good opportunity of servicing mr kelly ka right aur kamath sir sab ka style ye hota tha ki aaj agar vijay wale aa rahe hain मुझे पहले बुला लेते थे कि चलो आ जाओ वो टेंथ फ्लोर ऐसे से आई डोंट नो हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू हैव गॉन टू दैट इट्स अ डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ वर्ल्ड एनवायरनमेंट राइट वन पे और मैं उनके रूम के बाहर बैठा रहता था और नरेश गोयल विजय माल्या जीवी के राव जो भी है कामत साहब पिच करते थे कि इस बंदे से आप इंश्योरेंस खरीद लो बिकॉज आई वॉज इन नो वर्ड और उसके बाद मुझे बोला जाता कि इनके ऑफिस में जाओ और मैं उनके फैमिलीज में जाता था रोमेश सोफी ऑल दिस बिग गाइज सी दे एट द एंड ऑफ द डे दे सुपर इंस्पिरेशनल गाइज हु डन लॉट I would say make an effort to meet in person with this guy. The kind of positivity that you get is unbeatable, unmatchable. Right? You get hope end of the day. Whether we get money, resources, that's a different point. But you get huge empowerment. But these guys, what is their life story and why they are like that? Right? And that they will give you insight, which maybe you know, run of the mill mill people like me may not be able to. But but these guys are of a different league. I mean, I'll just stop here. There are many more anecdotes, but I would say that as a career, make an effort to good, get get an associated with good guys again. KGP natural center of gravity is to be introverted and be in your own network. This requires you to go out, right, and and make an effort. जहाँ भी आप काम करो वहाँ के chairman से जाके मिलो, right? मिलो उनसे बात करो, right? कुछ नहीं होगा. उनको भी इंसान चाहिए बात करने के लिए, right? But you benefit. Right and I mean immensely. Juniority, seniority, really doesn't matter. So, yeah. so this is a very really good input. I am just butting in before it goes to Anurag. See, one thing you have to remember. At least my time, I know. Uh, in India, every year the top 1,200 get into IIT. Got it? I don't know today the number must be top 10,000, 5,000. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Huh? My time, the top 150 will get into IMA and IMC. 120, 120. Today I know my son has graduated from IMA, so 4, 400, 400 and IMA. What I'm trying to say is that all of you guys, including us, we are in the very top few in terms of academic uh, achievement. So there is no harm in speaking to anyone. That's the point he's trying to say. So that's number one. Number two is don't have that feeling that अरे ये बुढ़ा को कुछ मालूम नहीं है. बुढ़ा has made lot of money. so you actually can learn a little bit you might be a great tech guy you know understanding immediately how to use perplexity right and everything but he has something else which will help you in life these are the two points basically which he is trying to say ha ah, because that network which you create later on will come in helpful so what i am doing is as a classic ceo and cmo i am demystifying their thoughts to you <laughs> so i basically what they are saying i am telling you in attribute form what will help you And that's my job. <laughs> okay, Anurag, yeah. you. <laughs> yeah, I know. You know, is an example of somebody who's not very deep into something and developing uh, a lot of expertise. And I think that's what I think is important. And their uh, you know, financial services and that kind of thing, exposure is uh, given that exposure to you know top management and that confidence to network and do business. So where did I start? Uh, of course, part of it I already spoke about. <laughs> Uh, so 1992 is when I started working. My first job was at UB Group. And once you land in Bangalore as a management trainee, the first thing they do is they take you to visit Mr. Malia's mansion and show his house, his cars, everything. And then Mr. Malia himself arrives and he talks to the guy and shows him once. And then he leaves. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I mean, he might have been a young chap, but he was pretty inspirational even then. 
I mean, he inherited business, etc. But he took it to the next level, and uh, that's when I understood the value of talent. In 1990 or 91, Mr. Malia had actually created his own seven ratnas, you know, hired people from top people from World Bank, this that, and created a fairly strong management team. Doing a lot of stuff, so that's where you learn first of all that hey, if you want to do something in the time, you've got to have a real top team with you. And they were very good at operations, execution, and stuff. Because without that, a business might cannot really grow. So I spent about three and a half years over there, and that's when I said, you know, the new opportunity, the new technology, the new stuff, and the digital equipment was expanding in India. They had both services and the product group over here, and they were thinking in the basement, which I came to know very well. <laughs> okay, that they are actually doing some hardware work over there. So it was a good mix of product, software, and this thing. And that's what uh, you know, got the attention of the uh, Pradeep Singh's company that you know, maybe this guy got some expertise in IT also. It lacked credibility in brand too, something which is interesting. Uh, I was okay with it. I mean, there was a stock option plan and Microsoft and those kind of things. So, what, what attracts people to join you? One of the most important things for an entrepreneur, smart people should be willing to work for you. And what I realized over there, he had hired some very, very incredible people from tech companies, both India and abroad, that he had really brought them down. So that's the storytelling that comes in. In terms of you know, what kind of an organization you want to build. That's, that's a very, very important thing for an entrepreneur. Without great people with you, who you trust, not just as a person, but also in terms of delivery, because ultimately your relationship is credibility will comes from the fact that you know somebody is willing to work hard. But, Not 70 hours, but and, you know, and I will just butt in here. A lot of young people I will talk to, you know, they have a thing that everyone wants to become the WhatsApp. What it means is they will have themselves and 10 people and they will build a 21 billion dollar company because the tech is so powerful. Correct. This is a thought among most of them. And I don't disagree. And it happens in Silicon Valley. If you look at Pinterest, that is about technology. I, I'm telling you real things. Is yeah. that correct? What I told you? You want to leverage technology. They are saying that <coughs> this thing about what we are talking about, people and all. If you have something like a WhatsApp, they had only 51 people in their team. And they had a $21 billion valuation. So they didn't have to build a big... The technology itself is so powerful that it disrupts everything. Absolutely. See, the way in India... Sorry to say, but a lot, most of the businesses are retail businesses. We are leveraging uh, uh, the low cost labor to build swiggies and zomatos and whatever, you know, flip cards, etc. It's because, you know, in 10 minutes the guy will arrive. And, you know, so, uh, what you are saying is essentially it's not that easy to find the inventive, disruptive technology. In India. Most of it will be business model technologies. Yeah. It's, it's basically so therefore it is retail. It's, it's the FMCG kind of folks who come into it and uh, build that kind of. Uh, yeah, it's a business model. It's a business yeah. model. It's not technology that people are building. Now, what we uh, uh, where we lack is a building a technology kind of thing, building the Pinterest, the product, and that's the data that I got in 9, 2000 when Pradeep Singh said, "Look, let me remove the product side from the services side because ultimately he thought that the services side exists as a cash cow to fund his product business. But the moment he realized that the product is semi-ready, you know, he got." Climate Perkins, you know, all those kind of, you know, top tier VCs. And we, we actually raised $19 million between 2000 and 2003. And we spent all of it. Anything you would have done differently or anything you think in the sense? See, I'll tell you, one of the things which, personally, I don't know, I mean, I, I've always been... No, through the career, yeah. it's not so much from your point of view, if anything helps them. That's yeah. the reason. See, that's, see, what, what I had done is, Worked in different industries, so maybe four or five industries. So you had a had a flavor of a global tech company, liquor company, IT services company, product company. Then finally, I joined Potential ICS in mutual fund here in Bombay. Totally different from everything else. That's where I came to know fund managers, people like Marine, etc. They were my colleagues. Okay, so that's another exposure I got. Something new. So what would I have differently? Probably I should have spent a little more in the financial services industry before jumping into, uh, uh, you know, <coughs> what I realized is that in 2006-07, the kind of hiring, the kind of growth that was happening was absolutely hyper. I, I thought that, you know, I can leverage whatever I know into 10x kind of a scenario. And then 2008 started, when the whole uh, 
world collapse around you. His dad was barrister in the Levens Brothers and, you know, credit swap and, you know, for six, seven months, one year, two years, nothing happened in the industry. Just <coughs> uh, okay. collapsed around it. So, what would I have different? Probably, uh, uh, could have stayed a little longer in the industry itself, maybe learned a little more. Uh, and then I could have used that knowledge better in uh, growing within the sector itself. Because two years wasn't sufficient to build the kind of network I needed in a particular area. Uh, you know, you might think that, okay, you are saying two years is not enough, but people start businesses without any network just after college. But then that's a different kind of a thing. You get an idea like a WhatsApp or a Pinterest or a, or a Facebook or something, go ahead and do it, yeah. But none of us are getting that most kind of a <laughs> these are these are businesses which are built on what is there in the market and your learning and exposure to that market. So that takes time. It doesn't happen uh, overnight. That, that detailed. If you have joined a company like Flipkart, your learning will be much faster. Because you know it's you know you can still, you know, if you have Flipkart, you can do sell everything else, you know. But today people realize that uh, a particular commercial business model is we can work for Amazon. That kind of product can be released. That's what some are saying. You are saying, yeah. yeah. Or you are saying fast. Well, yeah. I think you guys have got a perspective. Yeah. I will also come in as a panel and share my life story. And I'll do it slightly differently. I will tell you all the mistakes I have done. Huh? A lot of mistakes. More mistakes than actual good things. Huh? And then it's for you to see whether it, uh, what you learn from it. But before that, one question has come out of a few questions which I want you guys to answer huh? one by one. Okay, so this is a good question. What do you have to unlearn after spending some time in corporates and then trying to do entrepreneurship? Huh? So this you should answer it, whatever. Huh? Now in the meantime, before that, let me tell them about my kind of journey and what are the mistakes I have done. Huh? I will take a little bit of time. Huh? So first let me do a disclosure. <coughs> you know, I am still working very much. Okay. And uh, I have a number of interests huh, presently. So I have founded two kind of startup companies, name is called Growth Shift and Better My Career, both are about executive mentoring. Okay, and it is run by two separate CEOs who run it. Huh? No, no, not invested by anyone, my own investment, my cash I am burning or whatever. Huh? So these are the two things, it's an executive mentoring. It means mentoring people like you, not mentoring students. Yeah. Uh, apart from that, I do a little bit of investments, I am on board of a fairly large number of companies listed and unlisted and I am right now with a very large group called TCG group. Ah, they are owners of Haldia Petrochemical, so I work with the chairman of that group. You know, So this is my what I am doing right now. Now in terms of my career, let me start and what are the things, where are the mistakes I have done. So after 11-12, I was one of the I think few people in my school who had both biology and maths. PCMB as they call. Mm -hmm. I am from Don Bosco, Calcutta. Okay, Don Bosco, Park Circus, Calcutta. So I was one of the few people who had both. Now, I got into uh, your IIT, JE and other engineering colleges and all. And I got into all the medical colleges, starting from AIMS, JIPMAR, AFMC, CMC, Vellore, CMC, Ludhiana, Calcutta Medical College, all of them. So, and I had both. My personal interest was clearly to get into medicine. Because my rank in medicine was much higher. AIMS that time had 30 seats, AIMS Delhi. Whereas my AIR rank would have been 750. Got it? So clearly I was much better in medicine. Because if you can get in the top 30, that is better. Huh. But because of some reasons, my mother pushed me into IIT. There is another reason. One of my cousins, he is a IIT, KGP, IMC, seven years my senior. He is just retired. He was in a banker MD. He is my first cousin. So because of him. And his mother, father are both doctors and they have been fighting for their life without divorce. So they said, if you are a doctor, you will have a bad family life. This is the perception. <laughs> Got it? So the first mistake is that I wanted to become a doctor, but I was pushed into doing engineering, IIT, which I didn't want to do. Not that I was bad in it. So my first learning to all my kids, my, my, I have a son and daughter. Please pursue what you want to do. Don't get pushed by other people. And my mother meant it in good thing. She didn't mean any bad. 
you know she meant it in a way that in middle class families engineering the gestation period for uh, you know your profitability is faster rather than medical where the gestation period is longer ha she she would she said it in a very nice mane in a how do i say positive way so that's my first mistake okay then of course i went into iit someone said very interestingly i got a cgp of around 7.5 or 8 wrong if you are going to iit go there for studies got it screw everything else sorry i'm using a bad word because all these things will be there but these four years extract the maximum what is the fees you guys have paid for iit four years One and a half lakhs. But but then it increases for the younger batches. Okay, so one yeah, so maybe two lakhs, three lakhs, whatever. Our time, okay, fill me. The one of the big things which you guys have an advantage as a big graduate. You know, you are the premium institute. I am also premium institute. Today, boss, if you are going to an IMA or IMC, pay thirty lakhs, thirty-five lakhs tuition fee. You guys have to pay two, three, four, five lakhs. Got it? So and if you do an MBA from uh, my son is IMA two, three years ago, his pay take is in his loan. He's paid it back also. Ha huh. what i mean is still 30 lakhs it is 2 3 how much are you paying yeah. no, four, four, yeah. 12 lakhs so still it is doable huh? because it's under some kind of government thing and all my daughter has done nft bangalore that's also 12 lakhs four years okay so these are national institutes so one of the biggest financial things which you are not understanding is you are one of the top guys in the world who are getting your graduation exam sorry education without having a big loan or go to us those idiots have 1 lakh 50 thousand dollar loan got it so they have to first pay the loan and then pay they earn their money ha huh? so you understand so this i don't think any of you are understanding and realizing so please focus on your education whatever you can everyone cannot get a 10 cgpa ha huh? but at least focus we have wasted our time in some way because i had a 8 not that it you know anything problem that's for second is he made a very interesting kamal made a very interesting thing which is focus on your core area i am a chemical engineer can you imagine the kind of things i could have done or that that time we were doing composites i could have had a big business in composites those were cutting edge that time we are reading in material science composite today it is available biotechnology uh, everything fermentation all this we were actually starting and today that is commercialized chemical you are a naval architecture naval architecture i have one of my batchmates na juniors He is building the biggest bridges in the world. Sorry, ships in the world in South Korea right now. You may know him, Vishnu Chatterjee. Yeah, he is, yeah, he is in South Korea, China for the last thirty, twenty-eight, uh, thirty years. Okay, and the kind of ships he is building is the first in the world. See, because of this EV revolution, what will be happening is lot of EVs have to be built now. EVs cannot be built everywhere. only in china or some other places because the battery things are there only so those evs have to be built in china and transported across the world or us wherever they are building i don't know so there is huge these are special ships for carrying cars he is building that so one of the biggest issues is unfortunately we are drawn into non core sectors because of the difference in uh, i call it roi Money spent, how much you are earning a salary, or you can call it ROMI, whatever, huh? on your investment, marketing investment, what you do, what you are getting out. Huh? See, and financial sector will always be a big attraction because financial sector is nothing but sorry, money lending. Sorry, I didn't mean it that way, but huh? it's money lending. So money lending traditionally in India has always been the you know most profitable sector. Huh? So it will always be profitable, but. long term profitability is what you need to look at huh? so these are some of the points this is mine i joined chemical engineering then i went to do iim calcutta i gave only one iim that time there were three huh? a b c i did only c i got into c yeah clear i was very clear what i wanted to do i my first job was in bombay i joined png i was basically a fmcg guy because that time like we have jnai the big thing or bfsi the big thing that time fmcg was a big thing you know, all the best quality people are joining their growing industry so i worked in procter i worked in racket racket coleman now racket bank is a pepsi dabar so that's my first 10 12 years then i was in telecom i was in vodafone that time it used to be called hutch reliance communication that's my second decade and then i joined reliance retail i was the first employee of reliance retail first few 
I was a CMO of Reliance Retail, so I learned a lot. Huh. So I have no regrets that way. Uh, I learned a lot because FMCG, all these, if you are in a, my function, which is marketing, these are the real places to learn. Uh, it's like if you are in AI, you have to be in the big companies to learn, you know. Uh, what is that open AI? And what is the latest one by that IIT Madras guy? Perplexity. Perplexity. That's the place to be in, you know. So, you know, every time there are new things which are happening. And then, uh, so I was there for a fairly long time in Reliance Retail. Today, what you see in the country, Reliance Digital, Reliance Fresh, Reliance Smart, all these are built by me. The name Reliance Digital is given by me. Reliance Digital, Reliance Rescue. And then we built it. So I am very happy. They have really grown it and it's become a, I think it's a one, $150 billion valuation company. According to me today, the hidden valuation of Reliance Retail is actually more than the valuation of RIL. RIL is something around $150 billion or $120 billion. But though they are saying it's $100 billion, the real valuation of Reliance Retail is actually more. So I have some, you know, I feel good, proud, whatever you call it, huh, that I have been in some part way of the journey. Then my last decade, I have largely been in hospitality and education. So I worked with IIT Bombay as the first CEO of IIT Bombay. Education is unfortunately not as glamorous as it looks uh -huh. uh, because education and also I was the CEO of a school chain you know, called Vibhyar Schools. Oh, yeah. There are 50 schools so I was the CEO of that school. Uh -huh. So large part of education has become business. Uh -huh. It's not education but as a business guy I am okay. And also I was very happy working for a long period in a company called Sterling Holidays Thomas Co. Business of holidays. So my job is basically going and traveling across the country finding destinations where to launch resorts, launch it and ensure that we make money out of it. So when I joined in 2015, we had 15 resorts. When I left in 2020, I had 45 resorts. And I have traveled all across the country as part of my job and to all the holiday destinations. Uti, Kodai, Goa, uh, Manali, uh -huh, Wainad, Srinagar. So these are the places I have to go for work. So I had a great life. Now I am with a company called the Chatterjee Group. They are basically owners of uh, Haldia Petrochemicals and I work with the chairman. Plus I do my own investments and I have some startup. So this is my journey. What do I feel good about? That I think I have been very active and I have learnt a lot. That's one good thing. Uh, in, in Again, today's parlance, from a Gyan Yogi you have to become a Karma Yogi. Okay, I am giving all present parlance the way of looking. Because ultimately, Gyan has no value unless it can be converted into karma. And this is what my boss had taught me. Huh? Boss is Mr. Mukesh Ambani, Mukesh Bhai as we call him. Okay, I worked directly with him in Reliance Retail. Huh? We call him Mukesh Bhai or MDA. So he's taught me a very interesting, he taught us, means told us a very interesting thing is that one of the reasons for great quality success internationally in the Silicon Valley or US or in India now is that slowly Indian companies are able to understand the value of Saraswati to get Lakshmi. Previously it was two different things. The fellows who do know Lakshmi and the fellows who know Saraswati are different kind of people. So if the Saraswati guys actually come in and you know how to extract the Lakshmi from Saraswati, it's great. Of course both have to respect each other. So I'm just giving you this so you get an idea of how a long career is. Because career is not about two years. Huh? Unless you make so much of money that you make 10 years and then you relax. But even then you will feel a little bored. Ah, so you will have to do something. That may not be a money making career, but it will still be about something you do. So for me, that is important tenacity. That's one thing I'm telling you guys. In terms of mistakes, clearly my mistake is not to go for medical and go for engineering. Ah, I have nothing against engineering. Ah, but I think it's a mistake and therefore what happened in IMC, I was very focused. Uh, guess what was my uh, CGPA in uh, second year in IMC? Yeah. 10. So all subjects I took are all A+. plus Because I cherry pick the subjects that way. Uh, okay, because you can choose. First year you can't choose because it's set. Second year is all. I got all A+, plus in all the subjects. Okay. So I was very clear uh, that this is, let's me come here for whatever it is. Uh, so overall, my corporate career, I have been mostly a corporate guy. I'm not really an entrepreneur. You know, most of the small entrepreneurial things I'm doing is more as a passion and a hobby. You know, I'm really a corporate guy. Huh? 
Huh? So, a lot of mistakes. My first mistake is that I should not have left so many. In fact, one of the reason, things I am telling, even my son I am telling, my daughter I am saying, is that never leave your first job. If it's a good job, why should you leave it? Got it? If you think it's a bad job, of course leave it. But never. I, I was in so two, three mistakes. One is um, not going in for medical. That's first. Second is uh, I should have stuck to my core. I got three jobs after IIT. I was telling someone. I was telling them Asian pins, Unilever, and because I did my training in Hindustan liver in my engineering days and Tata Steel. I should have taken one and stuck with it for some time. Uh, in IMC, I got PNG, which was a day zero, very coveted, fantastic company to work in. Huh? At least for uh, management guys, huh? may not be for tech, tech, tech people. Uh, I should have just stuck on. Okay, so uh, these are the three big mistakes. Rest, and I think I changed a little too much, which I should not have. I don't have regrets, but I'm trying to share with you some learnings where if you believe, you can take it. And um, sorry, I am not letting you answer the questions, but I'm just finishing huh, so that they can take away something. What else? What else? Rest, I think they have covered that if you believe in something, do it fast. Another very important thing, which I don't think any of them will tell you, is that uh, long term, it is very, very important for your career to choose your right life partner. That is very important. Because finally, you know, you will stay four years in KGP, two years in wherever I am or Harvard or wherever. Then you will stay with the partner for some time. So if you don't do the right choice, it puts a lot of issues on your career also. So that is usually not covered in a professional thing, but it is important. Huh? That's what I think. Huh? There also some people have ups and downs, sine wave. Some people don't have sine wave. That's all them. But you know, most of the things are sine wave. Okay. So with this, I again hand it back to you guys. This question. Have you, uh, do you remember the question? Forgotten. Forgotten. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the story is powerful. No problem. <laughs> no, if Modi ji can talk, why can't we talk? Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, the question is what do you have to unlearn after spending time in corporates and then trying to do entrepreneurship? I think the most important thing to unlearn is your ego. Uh, one of the things which a corporate life gives you, there is a sense of entitlement and privilege. Uh, so you walk with a spring in your stride, you think, you know, uh, just because every minion in your office is following your order, the whole world is around you. Once you become a business person, uh, you actually are, you know, for example, I would say, oh, look, I'll talk to only CEOs, etc. right? No, I talk to the lowest person to get my business done. Okay, so it takes a long time to do that. Uh, so that's one thing. You are there any other skills. questions you can send me? Get rid of that. If there is anything. Uh -huh. Executive ego. While keeping a bit of it for the for dealing with the senior people. But otherwise, when you are seeking business, uh, because in a company you are not a salesperson essentially. Sales people are very different from the others. They are not like the marketing folk. They are not like anybody else. You know, because they know for them the important thing is to close the deal. Just selling, you know, you have all these examples of sell me the pen or something like that. But uh, trying to actually closing, close a deal, making sure that the customer buys your product and sends you the money is the most difficult part of your life. Without that, there is no business. I don't know if uh, Krishwa will agree to that. Sorry, the sales function is the most important thing in any organization. Unless it's a no, see the sale. problem what happens is I have I deal with a lot of young people, you know. So one of the things in all the fellows who are from tech background, IITs or others, they think that some invention which will do, which will become a WhatsApp, the power of the technology, mm -hmm. that is the issue. Right. Then there is no sales, it's the technology which is disrupting. Yeah. So that's where the problem is. So that yeah, is the answer you we have to give. But you still have to, for example, you know, Deep Singh or whoever may have made the best uh, CRM product the world has ever seen. But it means nothing unless you have actually large enterprise customers yeah. buying the product and betting on it. That's where your salespeople come in. I mean, the difference between all the products which are there in enterprise is not much uh, in terms of functionality 
etc. Maybe the way it's in the But But who wins? The one who is most persistent, whose shoes have got, uh, you know, most worn out, going to different customers. So persistent, the ability to, uh, you know, fail and then rise up again and again is extremely critical for any, any business person. You want to be an entrepreneur, you have to get your own staff made in, in the stationery shop. From there to selling it to everybody, to print your own invoice and uh, uh, send it to people. You make sure that you pay your GST, all sorts of things are happening. You don't do all that kind of, you know, hard work. Uh, suddenly you realize, uh, you know, a lot of things are catching up here. So, yeah, thanks. For our new guys, in the, you know, foreseeable future, if not now, so that sort of an business understanding you need, and also uh, yeah, a lot of great stuff. I mean, you have to just hang on and build team, motivate people. Yeah. So basically, you know, like uh, discussed before, very limited resources. Uh, you still have to do an amazing thing with uh, probably not IIMs, uh, probably not IIMs, and then you know, still have to deliver. Still have to motivate them that you know this is an amazing thing to be part of. So. These kind of things, I think. So what I am getting out of it, before I come to you, what he is telling is basically the glamorous world of entrepreneurship may look very glamorous, but at the end of the day, you have to actually work with a lot of uh, people who are outside the IITIM system, mm -hmm. but still make them work and get it. Whereas in a large corporate, you can have what is called the PLUs, people like us. Uh, there is a concept called PLUs. Ah, and PLTs. Ah, so if you want that kind of life, large corporates are better. Ah, but in real entrepreneurship in India at least, except a very few, uh, I'll give you examples of that, ah, where you can have PLUs only. <laughs> uh, but it will not happen. So that's one point you made. Yeah. Anurag, what is your comment? I, I think one of the things you spoke know, about is you know, a lot of introversion coming from, um, and I had to struggle for years around that, you know, and probably learning the beauty group closing me up a little bit, but uh, uh, still that basic characteristic, you don't seek out help from people, you don't seek out others to get along with you, uh, maybe try to solve all your problems yourself, you can do everything. Now the important thing is how you develop that, and uh, probably you have to, you know, like I said, I had, I had the good luck of working with some Entrepreneurs who had a vision to make products, who had a vision to do things. So I, oh, I tried to copy their uh, demeanor as well as uh, how they do that. And believe me, that also worked with the other people in the company because many of them went around and their characters also changed because from a person who is looking to, you know, have AP Mathe at a time or more senior AP CEO, from a fact that, you know, they want to build a company, they want to do something on their own, they can't take orders anymore, but, you know, Transform a lot of other drugs. They get an idea, they start it. And it's a very lonely journey. I mean, you know, to start with, uh, there have to be people who bet on you. I mean, if they don't give you business, uh, this thing. So somebody has to have a faith in you. Hey, I want to give another you know, they give you a chance. And that's when a lot of the relationships that you have developed over years, that comes useful. So, yeah, you know, because when you are alone, you are meeting with, uh, competing with very large established players, and somebody has to put faith in you. And that faith has to come somewhere. Suppose you're selling up software also. I mean, it, somebody has to sponsor you somewhere. It, it doesn't happen on your own. Because, you know, I have got the best product, so please buy it. So somebody has to say, hey, you know, great guy, you know, give a chance to come. At least six, seven people do it, you're you on a runway. But if you don't have that, then the business will not go as well as you know, you're already planned. Uh, the introversion part, stops you from, you know, fulfilling the best, reaching out and uh, uh, growing the business. Because that also stops you sales. Ultimately, a CEO or a founder is also the first salesperson of the company. And uh, those skills are important. You have to sell. There's another pride. I mean, this is a big ego which we all fight against. If my product is very good, then it will be a It doesn't work this way. Nothing happens magical. Nobody knows you what you are. You have to be a salesperson, you have to be a marketing person, you have to tell what you can do. Mr. Acharya is the expert in that, but, uh, you know, <coughs> and he has, you know, grown from that to somebody who is an expert. So the marketing and sales expertise is extremely important. You've got to be marketing yourself, selling yourself at all points of time. 
you can't say that I was a chum, so everybody will like me. I'm Einstein, so everybody will buy my We also did a lot of marketing for that. Yeah. Okay, good. Concluding remarks. Huh? And uh, but one question I someone has sent is very interesting, and you guys can answer. I'll also try to answer. Can we do both corporate jobs while doing some startup and if yes, how to keep balance? Also, what I have heard you have to give 24 by 7 effort for a startup. Is it possible to make a work-life balance? How much money you should have or earn before going for a startup? Do you have to keep some margin of safety or go all in with the wealth you have if you are dedicated for your startup? Huh, this partly I answered. So if you guys want to answer this question. Have you seen the movie Batman? Okay. So the guy was trying to jump over the well mm -hmm. with the with the rope and rope everything. Yeah. And finally the other guy said he removed the rope and then tried to jump. Yeah. Then he was able to cross it. Ultimately something like that. If you have too much of a safety net, you will never succeed. Anything you guys want to add? person has again said, how will you rate the risk and reward of moving from corporate to startup? Do you think you must just focus on the product or should your timeline for breaking in profitability so that you may know the right time to move out? Very difficult question. So first thing is that if you are thinking of moving out, then no one will invest on your startup. That's the first thing. Huh? So one of the things of investors is that if you have another option, they will not invest on your startup. Correct. First thing you have to give them is that this is the only thing in my life I don't have option. <laughs> Moment you say that they have options, they will invest. So one of the biggest mistakes young people do is that moment you have multiple startups, they will not invest on any of your startups. You have to have only one. That's one. Second is about corporate, both corporate jobs while doing some startup. Yeah, very much possible. See, it's a question of ethics. During our times when we used to have joined companies like Reddit and PNG, it was very clear that you cannot do anything else. But now I know a lot of people who have something else. As long as the company agrees, there is no problem. Yeah, but you know, Peshwa, those are more like gates, you know. No, because no, no. Even an executive today that is, is busy 24 by 7. It's it's not like your baby, you know, no, no, is no. not working on Saturday, Sunday or no, no, here they are person. See, here I tell you what, they are all product managers. Yeah. I have seen, I have 40 product managers in my startup, okay. 400 people. All of them are only having coffee. I don't know what work they are doing. <laughs> okay, so, so the question is, it is not about that. The, what I am saying is that if you can always have another corporate job and a startup. There is no problem, but it's in your mind of ethics. Suppose you are doing something in the area of, let's say, healthcare, health tech. You cannot have another startup in health tech. It is not ethical. Okay. Second is if you are told that you should work, so it is very it's a thin line. But technically you can do it. But mentally, can you be in places? I don't have a problem. I am okay with that. Because when he is in office, I take him apart. Not leave him. So his bosses will not leave him, unless his boss is a joker. He lost the things. The delivery is delivery based. So the point here is that there are ways of doing. You can have your brother <coughs> front-end this, not your name. You can have your wife front-end it. You have to be ethically correct that you are not taking company info and giving. That's a different one. So you can do in a certain way. I mean, and there is nothing wrong. I am okay with it. Technically, I have no problem. I have no problem. As long as the owner stroke the MD, stroke the CEO knows about it. See, I am very, I, mean, I don't like People doing things without knowing, without telling. See, today there are talent, especially in the tech world, where they say that I am in your company as the product head or the CPO, chief, you know, whatever, tech officer, CTO or CPO, but I also have a startup which my wife is doing, I give some advice. That is there today. As long as you are able to do the ethical things, there is no. 
the next question is how much money you should have or earn. This is my viewpoint. Uh, this is, you can have a different viewpoint. The next, under starter, uh, the only advantage is basically it's product development is probably 10x faster. So, you know, we don't have to make a three month plan or a three year plan to develop something. No, this question is what do you need to unlearn? Yeah. These assumptions. These are assumptions. This is a standard product model which all of them are taking, which I understand is that they will be in a great company, they will earn four years, they will save 25 lakhs and then they will do the startup. This is the financial model they are thinking. Correct? Mm -hmm. Most of them. 25 lakhs or 50 lakhs or 100 lakhs, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So, therefore, they are asking that once you are in a startup, what are the things which need to change or don't need to change? This expectation setting I was talking about that you know, the product development can be done much, much, much faster and you have to do it because that's probably the one thing you are good at, at least to start it you need to be good at that or some people start with because you know, they're great at sales and somehow you know, convince a set of investors to eventually you know, develop a great product thing. So it depends on your strength but usually what we see is that development can be way faster than in a large organization where you make it year-long plan and all that. What so, do you think of fake it if you make it? You can do it great, but how many can do it? So, uh, no, no, as panelists, we don't recommend that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you have to recommend the right thing. If someone else is able to game the system, that will their thing, but he will not recommend gaming yeah, the system. Because Silicon Valley had that kind of a culture, whether you have a person who made the blood terror there are no, so they have a lot more, you know, the pharma broke, smart, scary, and, you know, those kind of folks. Don't get into that trust. That's another thing. Uh, no, there are people. See, I also had an assumption that when I, I, I used to invest a lot of money in startups, you know, if someone says, let's put in this. So I had an assumption that people were coming from good quality institutes. You know, and for me, IIT, KGP is a good quality institute, IIT, IIM, that they are good people. If I put them money, they will. So I have actually invested on some people on IIT KGP. I will not tell the name. Later on I can tell. So that fellow has taken my money advice. They tried to run something. And of course I am a senior guy. I will have time. You know, this thing. If he is sitting on the table for 25 hours, I may not be able to have other things. What he has done is he's taken the money. One of it, and he has launched another company in the same name with the same idea. Got it. So in IIT KGP. So the pro pro point I am trying to say is that Previously in my mind it was that there is a moral cutoff, but unfortunately ethical and moral things has nothing to do with your education. Huh. So it might be the probability is less still now, but not possibility is there. So we are just yeah, saying so. And then NDA culture needs to come in. Yeah. 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 Okay. Where you share the ideas and you know, make sure that the person doesn't. No, this is not idea. Yeah, see, this is a simple thing is that he thought that yeah. instead of I mean, being 33, 33, 33, he'll be 100. But today the problem is he's nowhere. Mm -hmm. Because it's not that easy to build a big company. Mm -hmm. The value of experience for the 33 percent comes in a certain way. So that they don't understand. A lot of engineers don't understand the value of brand. When I mean brand, it's people is the brand. So I'll talk about it a little bit later after they finish. So I just cover that you know, a little bit like the positive of looking at it, fake it, you know, till you make it is that you're in very short bursts. Like, you know, if you know that you can build such a product, you're almost there and somebody is asking you whether you're there or not. That's where basically it's a, it's between investors and companies, people do it. If you have the confidence that you can actually deliver it. Uh, because, yeah, that's the parlance in which it's used, I think, but not with clients because you are delivering what you are delivering, you know. There's no way you can say that, you know, it's bigger than what it is. So with clients, everything comes, you know, black and white a little bit. Uh, whereas with investors, you are setting expectations. You know, can you do it or not? Now it's like, you know, you're thinking in your mind, is it going to be done in one month or is it going to take one year? Or like, don't have the capability to do it. So in that sense, in short bursts, people say, fake it till you make it in some business schools. Uh, but yeah, if you are taking too much of a gamble, there, then you have become like the gambler, which we don't want to enter, right? In any sphere, like right? financial or in terms of the promises to be done. Kamal. Yeah, on unlearn, the question is that you must unlearn for the ventures that I have been, I have spent time in under unlearning. I can give an example like when I started uh, my data analytics company and because everybody was from like insurance background, 
we said that one year we will not do insurance, otherwise we will only keep talking only insurance. So we worked in payments, in mutual funds, in capital markets, but we didn't work in insurance because we want, wanted everybody to unlearn. Right? Otherwise, you know, when you have the same like group thing, then you really will not innovate. That was a way of our coping which may be different for each of us, but the reality is that, that one must unlearn. That's all I would say. And the other thing Keshul touched in a, in a direct way is that you will have to be like brutally honest. Right? There is no other way to go about it. Because even then the errors will be my maximum. Right? Like you expect that you know I will make money, some revenue in six months, nothing will happen, suppose. Right? So that that honesty is yours. That honesty cannot be somebody else's story. These two things have to because then that is when you are actually on the way to entrepreneurship. That you can really create something if you are honest. If you have hope or you are believing something, no, no fact check. Unnecessarily making very strong forward-looking statements, they are not going to take you anywhere. Yeah. So, a little bit more, more thing on this is that, frankly, I don't believe there is any difference between corporate and entrepreneurship, frankly. Okay. You as a person remain the same. There are people who have worked in corporate and been successful entrepreneurs. So, I don't think the difference here is, there is a big thing in the way you will do entrepreneurship, which means, Suppose you are a, in a corporate, someone is working in Motila Oswal or somewhere, huh? okay. Now in a Motila Oswal, he is part of a big building, that building itself is 1 billion dollar. His market cap is I think 20,000 crores, okay, or 30, 40,000 crores, I don't know, whatever. So he is part of the system, huh? he may be a junior guy, but he is part of a big system. Suppose that person tomorrow opens a fintech. He is a one man person, then he has to get his co-founder, co-founder might say, no, no, I am working in Google, I can only give you two hours. Mm -hmm. So he has to do everything. So that concept, so if you have worked in a corporate where you have moved way up, then you are fine. You are one of those corporates where there is sense of entitlement, you have come in, then you are little gone. So this is very important. So for me, I have worked in two corporates. In PNG, you have to join as a management trainee and become a CEO. There is no fellow joining like this. That's the PNG culture. So you actually learn every process within the company at least. Of course, they do a lot of training and hand holding. We are not left in the swimming pool, huh? we are told. In Then I worked in Reliance. In Reliance, you might be God, but still you have to do everything yourself. The only God there is Mukesh Ambani huh? and now the other uh, people. Huh? So, therefore, in these kind of places, you are actually an entrepreneur. So, there is no difference. So, for me, there is no difference. Okay, that's one. Second is, suppose you have a salary of 20 lakhs. Let's assume, I, I know, CTC. Of 20 lakhs CTC means you are personally delivering 200 lakhs profit, which means you have to do a revenue of 1000 lakhs. Then only you can do 20 lakhs. So this understanding if you don't have, so if your company never goes to that, you will never get that. You have to be very clear. So startup karega to thik hai, but thousand lakh hoga, tabhi tumhara abhi ka lifestyle maintain hoga. You have to be very clear on that. Unless of course you have parents and others to take care. That's a different one. I am assuming like to like, apple to apple comparison. So this glamour of, uh, it will slowly go away where it is someone else's money I am spending and I am telling you one more brutal fact nothing to do with IIT KGP huh? because this is nothing to do with you guys the brutal fact is lot of young people come into entrepreneurship they raise 10 million dollars then they have a salary so it doesn't matter whether the company is there or not I have got my salary I have got my experience and then the company goes away so that is there it is not real entrepreneurship it is more about spending time and getting your salary out huh? so to me, there is no difference according to me. And according to me, the person actually doesn't change. Ah, whatever change can happen is still 22, 24. After that, more or less, the person remains the same. Ah, so that is a question. Okay. There is one more interesting question, which I will... Uh, uh, we are more or less in terms of time done. Nah? Particularly, it doesn't mean it's the right thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right thing is right thing, so you can have a different viewpoint, this is my viewpoint. Next question is, how much money you should have or earn before going for a startup? Do you have to keep some margin of safety or go all in with the wealth you have if you are dedicated? This is a wrong question. 
बिकॉज आई एम टेलिंग यू ना यू गाइज आर वेरी वेल प्लेस बिकॉज यू आर नॉट फ्रॉम आई एम वेर यू आर थर्ट और आई एस बी हाँ वाई एस बी इज इवन हायर सम फोर्टी टू लैक्स यू हैव टू पे सो इफ यू हैव टेकन लोन यू हैव टू रिटर्न दैट आई आई टीज इज मोस्टली नॉट द केस इट्स मच लोअर सो दैट्स नॉट अ राइट क्वेश्चन इफ यू थिंक यू हैव इन यू एंड यू द आइडिया इज गुड देन यू शुड गो फॉर इट बिकॉज मार्जिन ऑफ सेफ्टी का कोई But there is no end to it. So when you start paying the loan back after three years after that, or immediately? Immediately. Immediately. Normally, this kind of loan, five to seven, twelve lakh, they finish up in uh, three, four years. It's not continuous. One observation I have on that question, because there are two parts to it. Yeah. Is that one thing is missing in that question that they, you are not talking about what is the customer need. See, without being besieged of a customer need, don't start. Everything else follows. If there is no need in the market, what are we talking about? Right? So no, but they can create. But here, the technology doesn't think that way. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. they actually create a product and believe that that may become a need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have to think. See, yeah. Facebook पर पहले Facebook था नहीं. No, but still there were socials on the ground. There was MySpace. Nah, there, there was that all those models all that. Yeah, but there was a flexibility. That's not. A, so they have somehow created the need. No, they may have an insight. फास्टेस्टमर्स हाँ बट ऑफकोर्स आउट ऑफ द ट्वेंटी मिलियन पीपल ओनली टू मिलियन आर यूजिंग क्विक कॉमर्स सो इट्स द सुपर टॉप प्रोकोडाइल दिस एलिगेटर क्लास दैट इज द फेलोज हु आर यूजिंग क्विक कॉमर्स नॉट द रेस्ट बट इट्स द फास्टेस्ट ग्रोइंग and that fellow is apt to fellow has been able to yes and and big fast case said no we will not do it it's not practical yeah. also so nonsense is out there but since jepto delayed so he was already ready with his telepi boys they also did it very fast with his command big fast case had to do it when when he arrived no in fact i have a little different view point which is my view point is like this is that most of the slightly senior people like us we are very good in gtm growing the business taking it forward stability maintenance but innovation comes from younger people you know yeah. so my dear yeah. so therefore don't lose on that <laughs> ha huh? because then it's gone actually no on the financial side you know at least you should have three years of funding you should assume that you know the company doesn't pay you for at least three years and hopefully in three years you will make somebody believe that there is something in it and either you are getting as much revenue or investors support something 3 uh, to 5 years i think is a good thing. so two comments one is i am strongly believe that innovation is from young people old people cannot bring that kind of disruptive innovation but they can build businesses second is what he said is that your personal money don't feel that tomorrow someone will give you money so if you have a big but there is a flip side to it which is that at a early stage i'm just giving an example that she graduates next year or whenever year Thank after Huh. Let's say at an early stage of her career, she will not have a big expenditure, household expenditure. But at a stage of yours or mine, just two kids in two schools, rental, this, that, that itself will be a big expenditure. So later you push it, your opex is higher. It's called overheads. The overheads is higher. Early on you have no overheads. so the classic startup way is that enter in a stage where you have no overheads and enter in a stage where you have the ability of going and staying in his garage or home that stage today though we are batch mates it will be very difficult for me to go to his home and or he to come to my home and stay because you know we have a certain thing so you should not enter a startup at this stage you can i mean i still have the ability but what i mean is this is the better thing to do you know because in case things are not happening you can hedge it you can go and stay with him something else so your opex is lower so that is the other thing so it's all about you huh? so last you also get into lifestyle trap after a while yeah you need to have uh, a major over after certain age or something but that's the thing uh, you know 
Yes, the, the third question is how will you rate the risk and return on moving from corporate to startup? Do you think you must just focus on product? No, no, this is a very difficult question. So, the, see, boss, if you compare, again, the last, before you guys have the last word, I'll tell you, it's simple. Any of you buy stocks? Okay, you are the one, your business is that. But who else? Huh? Okay, so there are two kinds of stocks in India. There are 6,000 companies. Uh, the top maybe 100, 200 or 500, I don't know, are called the large caps and the rest are called mid caps and small caps. So very simple, a good corporate job is like a large cap. Alpha and beta will be low, alpha will be high or whatever. Whereas a startup is a mid cap. Mid cap, beta, beta may be very violent. So if you are a person who buys mid cap, then only you should go into startup. Simple. Uh, micro cap, micro cap. Ha, micro cap is even better. He's made a lot of money on a micro cap recently. Startups are micro cap. No, 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 no. Not that. No, no, not from a valuation point of view. I'm seeing from a mindset of an investor's point of view. I'm trying to tell you that. Got it? So if you are still in the age where I am a corporate, then you cannot like the startup. Startup ecosystem is about having small offices, but it's your own office. If you like that, then that is the place. That thing of having done something. You know, that <coughs> thing which we get, which is called CAPTCHA, I don't know whether you know, that is by one IIT Kanpur guy. Mm -hmm. yes. huh? And he keeps on getting that point, one paisa revenue every time. Huh? Or uh, this uh, fellow who has the uh, audio fellow, Bose. Okay. He's an Indian. <coughs> yeah. Bose. So that thing is there. So if you are one who wants to leave the legacy, then you are the startup guy. So this is my comment. But uh, you guys can uh, kind of have some end comments if they have uh, anything else you would like to say uh, about this thing. The whole thing is about startup versus corporate. Help them a little bit in their what they want to do. I think we have given a lot of things. Uh, Inputs. Uh, so it won't be a job for sure. There won't be any security on the financial side. Or anything. So if you're strongly feeling that you know there is a need, or you know you feel that you know this will become a need, something like that, and only you can bring it to the you know you have the vision. That will be the case for the past few years. Only you are seeing it, and nobody else is seeing it. Literally. So then you have to basically take whatever precautions you need for financials and all, and you have to jump in. And it's a great thing to do, you learn a lot. So you have to basically, you know, keep your eyes open and dream big sort of thing, right? And you're, you'll learn much more faster, I think, than in corporate thing. I mean, you can stay in the corporate job and probably still progress at a decent pace and all with a little bit of slow learning pace. But here you have to learn very rapidly because it will die fast, right? You only have probably three years or some such thing to do something, you know, solid. Otherwise, it won't take off, it will just die. So learning will be much, much, needs to be much, much more greater. So, um, yeah, it's words. a personal choice, that's what I would like to say. That both have given you heard us out quite a bit. So it's a personal choice and there are risk reward for this. See, 90% of all businesses fail and it applies. And to tech startups, probably 95% fail. So you have 5% chances of success. So whatever you have in mind has to be really well thought. I mean, if, if you are passionate about the idea, you believe it's going to succeed and it's really good. And not just that, you believe in it. Maybe talk to a few people who are experts in the area to tell you, that, hey, that's a sound idea. Maybe trusted people, you could tell somebody else who might work with them. Try to run this method. Uh, the main thing is that one must be aware of, of this. Second is, have an option to go back to, you know, have the skills, etc., to go back to corporate life if that doesn't work. And cut your losses quickly. Don't carry on, you know, uh, too much. You know, once you realize that the business is not working, just give it. Yeah, now you can, you can pivot. That's it. So, no, wonderful three of you to really give inputs. I have my last word because I am the kind of moderator. So, I will have my last word. So, I'll tell you what I think. Okay. Uh, and I'm a little maverick from rest of the people. Okay, my strong recommendation is that all of you who are at least your respective field, I'm assuming most of IIT KGP is engineers and science. Now, of course, there's economics and humanities. But my first recommendation is that stick to your field. That's first. Second recommendation is that 
I am wanting all of you to become business or entrepreneurs. I don't want actually anyone to work in a job. Because see, you are the privileged class. You need to create jobs. Okay, so frankly, except for getting some capital or getting some experience, if you ask me, my personal mission is all of you should become business people. Now, whether it's a startup or you buy a business or create your entrepreneurship, that's what my recommendation is because that's where you can really give back to the nation. No, you have to create jobs. You should not be in jobs. So my very strong recommendation and the third one is, see today all of you are young. Okay. When you become my age, I'm 55. Okay. It is not about what you have done. You will always feel, have I left a legacy? So, even if you are in a big corporate, I was CM of Reliance Retail, but no one will remember me, everyone will remember Mukesh Ambani. Whereas, he has created a company of his own which is in HR and hopefully that is a legacy. Hopefully I am saying, I don't know the thing. Yeah, you got it, so that's a big difference which you will not understand right now. But later on at my age, that's very important. Whatever it is, if you can leave something, whether it's a tech patent, tech product, company, startup, business or something, you will feel that. So, this is with this, I uh, kind of uh, thank everyone for attending. A little bit of we have been talking. Ah, but thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone, for participating in the discussion. Now, I would like to. Uh, take a few minutes and tell you about how e-health health sure. startups and students in the sure. services. And uh, before uh, you go or whatever, I am happy to answer any questions at a you know, personal level. If there is something, four of us are here for a little bit more time, please use that. Yes, I hand over to you.